Well, the Jays get swept four straight games at the Tropicana Field. Um, they, they've lost, I mean, they're one and nine in their last 10 games. They have not won basically anything lately. They're 55 and 89 and the Jays are on pace for their first 100 loss year since 1979. I mean, look, a hundred losses explains it, 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 it happens, you know, and when it happens, it means you're bad. And the Blue Jays over the last while have just been not good at all. You know, they're now, what, 34 games under 500. They just got swept by the Rays, and none of the contests were really even close except for game one, and that was just a debacle defensively. So it really was just a not a great series at all down at the Trop. Now, it never is for the Blue Jays. But let's if we can dissect any positives, that's what we're here to do because, really, I mean, what else is there to say about this Blue Jays team, all right? Uh, in the bottom of the first inning, Jacob Wags back. I mean, Austin Meadows is an absolute freak of nature against the Blue Jays, and he's a solo shot, making it one nothing raise. But in the top of the second inning, Vladimir Guerrero Jr. walks, and then Randall Gritchick comes up and destroys a ball to center field, a two-run shot for Gritchick, and that is his 25th home run of the season, tying his career high of last year, and a great job by Randall Gritchick. And what I've learned from Randall Gritchie, he's not a guy that's going to take his walks. He's not a guy that's going to be glamorous, but he's going to hit the long ball. 25 home runs is a very good year for him. Yeah, he hits around 230 every season, but fine. That's just the way he is, all right? And offensively, that was basically it until the top of the ninth inning where Vladi had an RBI single to bring home Rowdy Telez. And that was it. Jays lost that one like we talked about, 8-3. They don't really get anything going. I mean, if there's any positives, there really isn't much. Uh, there's a lot of one first today. The Jays had a total of six hits, but once again, they strike out in double digits. Ten strikeouts for the Blue Jays today, and it's just not very good. You know, Bo Bichette went one for four in the ball game. Rowdy Telez one for four with a run scored. Vladdy one for three with an RBI run scored and a walk, so a good day at the plate for Vladdy. Gritchick one for four with a couple RBIs. Obviously had the home run, and he scored the run on that home run, obviously. Uh, Jonathan Davis, I mean, the last couple games, he's been pretty good. He, he, I, I, I kind of like Jonathan Davis in the field. Now, hear, hear me out here, guys, because I know a lot of people you know, don't see Jonathan Davis as a, as a great player for the Blue Jays, and I, I don't know how I feel about him. Yeah, he's 27 years old. Not one of these young guys coming up trying to look for spots like an Anthony Alford or, or somebody like that, or even a Derek Fisher or Billy McKinney, guys like that. But for Jonathan Davis, the reason I like him, and there was a few plays on this, he's smart in the outfield. He's got speed. You can see he can play pretty good defense. He made one of the greatest catches we have seen at the Tropicana Field last time he was there. And yeah, offensively, we're not too sure what he has right now, but he has speed. He's got, he, he's got you know, he's, his defensive ability is great. There was a couple plays in, in this game where I look at it and I'm like, man, that's pretty damn smart. He sets up, you know, there's a fly ball to him, tagging up from third. He, know, he knows for a fact he's not going to get him at the plate. So what does he do? Fires to the cutoff guy, gets the ball in the third, guy doesn't move to third base. Whatever. It's a small thing, but it, 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 it keeps the guy at second and not third. Another play, you know, a fly ball to him again. And he lines up while he's tracking the ball to second base. Gets it, fires it in the second, nobody going there. It's just the small plays from Jonathan Davis in the outfield that I'm really starting to like. Now, offensively, over the last two games against Charlie Morton and against, uh, I don't think his, his hit was not against Glasnow today, but uh, he went one for four in the ballgame, had a couple strikeouts today, but is a 164 average, raising it six points from, uh, from yesterday. But I mean, you know, yeah, he went 0 for three in his first game back, but then he went two for four with a double yesterday. And then he went one for four today. So you know what? Again, he deserves a chance. And the fact that he's playing well in the last couple of games, I think you got to give him an opportunity because no one's stolen a spot. That's for sure. All right. And uh, Brandon Drury went one for three in the ball game. He had a walk. And uh, the bottom of the lineup of Jansen and Urania combined 0 for 7 with a strikeout. So you really didn't get much offense from the Blue Jays today. There really wasn't a whole lot. And there really hasn't been much all series. Now the Rays do have one of the, if not the best pitching staff in the league. So... With the Blue Jays team who's struggling offensively, facing the best pitching rotation or best pitching staff in the game, it's not very fun. And you saw it this series. They lost all four games. Waggis back, Jacob Waggis back, wasn't very good today. He wasn't very crisp. Went four and a 30 of seven hits, six runs. All six were earned. Struck out two and walked two um, and gave up a home run, obviously, to Austin Meadows. He wasn't very sharp. He was a lot of middle-middle, and, and he wasn't looking good. 
Uh, you know, we saw Wilmer Font come in there and he threw two thirds of an inning, gave up a hit, struck out a batter. That was it for him. Sam Gavilio went two innings, gave up two hits, two runs, and got a couple strikeouts, so he didn't have a good job. And then Ken Giles went out there, had a clean inning of work through a clean inning, obviously, ERA of two for Ken Giles. A very good season, the last for, for our, for the, for 100 miles, or 1,000 miles, 100 miles Giles. But for the Blue Jays, excuse me, guys, there isn't much positives. There really isn't. I mean, what are you going to say in a ball game like this? Well, you know, this guy had a pretty good game. You lost 8-3. You've lost seven in a row. Your starting pitcher didn't do well. You had a total of six hits. You gave up eight runs. I mean, is there anything positive taken from the ball game today? They didn't commit an error. I guess you could throw that out there. But it's just not very fun to watch this team right now. And I understand that. A lot of you guys watching this are like, man, you know, I give you credit or or uh, this team sucks or what? I, I, I'm preach, man. I mean, they're coming up on 100 losses. You don't see that too often. When you do, you know your team's bad. And the Jays are right now, all right? Speaking of, well, I would say speaking of bad, but the Boston Red Sox, a team that's probably going to be outside of the playoffs very, very soon. They are well. They're going to Rogers Center for a three three game series. This uh, starting on Tuesday, yeah, a three game set starting on Tuesday. Excuse me, guys. Seven oh seven first pitch at Rogers Center. I'm assuming it's going to be a TJ Zoic type of start. You know, with Wilmer Font pitching today, very very small, only two thirds of an inning, obviously. But with him pitching today and with TJ Zoic, you know, going through five days of not pitching, he deserves it and he needs an actual start. None of this opener crap and bringing him in later like they did in his first outing. He deserves a start and he's going out there against the Boston Red Sox. They're throwing these young guys out there against the big clubs and seeing what they got. Zoic against the um, Atlanta Braves was great, had one tough inning. Uh, Anthony Kay was great against the Tampa Bay Rays, had one tough inning but didn't let it bother him. He did a great job. So now, if I'm right and TJ Zoic is getting the start in game one against the Red Sox, you're facing Boston, one of the best offensive teams in the game. So here you go. Let's see what you can do, kid. And uh, that, that could be game one. Game two uh, is Trent Thornton on Wednesday. And then game three, the finale, is Clay Buckles, former Boston Red Sox, obviously, on Thursday to wrap up the three-game set before the Jays welcome in the Yankees. Yippee. It doesn't get any easier for this team at all. You know what? There's no easy teams when it comes to the Blue Jays because you're 34 games under 500, And the easy team... Is yourself. You're beating yourself up half the time. So it's tough right now being a Jays fan. I know you guys are hanging in there for dear life and most of you guys are gone. And I get that. I get that because this team sucks. And hopefully in the next year to two years, they're back to contention again. And it'll be a lot more fun watching Blue Jays baseball instead of this mess. All right. So you know what, guys? That is going to do it for this one. If you guys enjoyed this video and you guys did not enjoy the game once again today, smack the like button. Do appreciate that. Hit, this, hit the like button if you guys didn't even watch the ball game because... I'm assuming that's quite a few of you. I hate to say it, but I don't blame you. All right? Hit the like button, all that crazy stuff. Hit the subscribe button if you guys have not already. Comment down below your guys' thoughts on this game, your thoughts on the video, your thoughts on the future of the Blue Jays, and then especially the way they're playing as of late. What are your thoughts on that? And also Anthony Kay's outing. What are you, what are you expecting out of him and TJ Zoic the rest of the season? I want to hear your guys' thoughts all in the comments below, guys. Please go do so. And uh, also... I mentioned the last few videos. I'm going to mention it again until the actual day. September the 14th at 3 p.m. If you guys are interested in doing the Fantasy Hockey League that I'm in, please, guys, go sign up down below. The link is in the description for the Fantasy League on ESPN. Go check it out, guys, if you guys are interested in joining the Fantasy League uh, that Evan, myself, and another buddy are going to be doing. All right? It's a lot of fun. We did it last year. It was a lot of fun with a, with quite a few of you guys joined, and it was a lot of fun doing that. Hopefully, we can get the same guys, if not more, in the league, and it'll be a lot of fun. All right? So check out my main man, Mo Buckets, on Twitter, guys. Blue Jays Wave on Instagram. I hope I hope you on their podcast this week um, to talk about the Blue Jays and talk about the struggles they've had and all that crazy stuff that's going to be happening towards this Blue Jays team. The links are, no, 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 I don't have the links down in the description, but go check them out on Instagram, guys. Blue Jays Wave. Like I said in yesterday's video, if they have any highlights, they'll be up on the Instagram page, but they have not been, there haven't been many highlights for the Blue Jays. I think they posted Gritchick's home run because it was a home run. You, you got to find something. All right, so go check it out, guys. Blue Jays Wave on Instagram. Twitter is down below for myself. Follow up, send me a DM, do all that great stuff. And I will talk to you guys, Jays Edition, in the opener of the three-game set against the Red Sox. They're uh, on Tuesday night, 707 first pitch at Rogers Center. No, yeah, yeah, 707 first pitch at Rogers Center Tuesday. 
As uh, I'm assuming TJ Zoic is getting the mound for the Blue Jays. Nathan Eovaldi on the mound for the Red Sox in game one of the three game set. Only the Jays can get back in the win column and end this seven game losing streak. Hope you guys, hope you guys enjoy this video. Talk to you guys then.